So Optimus can walk the walk, uh -huh. but maybe not quite talk the talk, or right. pour the pour, or whatever. A fair assessment. And this is where it gets interesting when we start comparing. We need to be careful about the information we consume. Okay. When you see a cool robot demo, okay, don't just assume it's all real. Right. Ask questions like, who built it? Yeah. What's it supposed to do? All right. So you know those Optimus robots Tesla showed off at their. Um, we robot yeah. event. Yeah, we robot event. Pouring drinks, winning at rock, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. It uh yeah. got a lot of people talking. Definitely. But how much of that was like the robot actually thinking on its own? Right. That's our deep dive today, unpacking Tesla's Optimus robot, the reality versus the hype, mm -hmm. and what it means for the future of robots. Yeah, and we've got some uh, really interesting stuff to dig into. Yeah. Like Chris Wabba's analysis. Right. He really breaks down what we saw at that event. For a second, they're even... I was wondering if Optimus was about to like start filing tax returns or something. Right. Turns out... A lot of those smooth moves were thanks to teleoperation. Mm. Humans were calling the shots behind the scenes. Yeah. Kind of changes the picture a little bit, right? It does. It really raises some intriguing questions. Yeah. Like, why would Tesla go this route? Yeah. You know, they're showcasing Optimus to the world. Right. One possibility is that they're giving us like a sneak peek of the future. Okay. Demonstrating what Optimus could be capable of. Yeah. Once the AI is totally there. So like a teaser trailer for a movie. Because so it's not even in scale production. Yeah, right. pre-production exactly. Okay. And this hype the future thing, it's not just Tesla. Right. This is like a very common thing in emerging tech fields. Okay. You know, remember all those early self-driving car demos? Yeah. Lots of promise. Mm -hmm. But the reality was often a bit more hands-on. Hands-on behind yeah. the wheel. Okay, so maybe those cocktail serving bots aren't quite ready to replace bartenders just yet. Right. But even Chris Wobbs admits Optimus's walking ability mm. is legit AI controlled. Yeah. And that's not easy to pull off. Not at all. Bipedal locomotion walking on two legs like we do right. is a massive challenge in robotics. Yeah. It requires incredibly precise balance coordination, the ability to adapt to different surfaces and stuff. Wow. It's really remarkable. I never even thought about it like that. Right. Suddenly my morning stumble to the coffee machine feels way more impressive. Right. Getting a robot to do that on its own is like yeah. a huge accomplishment. Okay, but back to those signaling devices that Wobbs mentioned. Yeah. So Optimus can walk on its own. Right. Why all the human guidance for like pouring drinks or playing games. Yes, yeah, that's the million dollar question, right? Right. It suggests that while Tesla might have nailed the walking part, other aspects of autonomous functionality like object recognition, grasping and fine motor skills yeah. might still be under development. So Optimus can walk the walk, uh -huh. but maybe not quite talk the talk or right. pour the pour or whatever. A fair assessment. And this is where it gets interesting when we start comparing Tesla's progress yeah. with other companies in the humanoid robot space. Exactly. Like figure AI's figure O2 robot is already operating autonomously in factories, factories already. So while Optimus is learning to shoot a three-pointer, right. other robots are out there clocking in for work. Exactly. And it's not just figure AI. Right. Boston Dynamics Digit Robot and Agility Robotics 1X Neo Beta are already navigating homes. Really? Dealing with unpredictable clutter and all sorts of real-world challenges. Which makes me think maybe Tesla focusing on those teleoperated demos was strategic? Hmm. Are they like steering clear of those trickier environments for now while they perfect the fundamentals? It's possible. I mean, think about it. A factory floor, it's relatively structured. Right. Predictable. Totally. A home is like a whole other ball game. Right. Constantly changing kids, pets, you name it. Yeah. It's uh, mastering autonomy in that setting is really hard. Yeah, that makes those spilled drinks at the Wii Robot event seem a lot less impressive now. Right. But this does highlight a really important point. Yeah. Developing truly autonomous robots is really complex. It's incredibly complex. It's not just about like getting them to move around. Uh -uh. It's about giving them the ability to like perceive, mm -hmm. interpret and react to their surroundings in a way that like makes sense. In a meaningful way. Absolutely. Which brings us back to Tesla. Yeah. Where does this leave Optimus in the grand scheme of things? Well, it's clear Tesla has big ambitions. Yeah. Elon Musk envisions Optimus as a multi-purpose, affordable humanoid robot. Okay. You know, a jack of all trades in the robot world. So aiming high, but realistically, 
Yeah. How does their progress stack up against the competition? Well, based on we robot and what we're seeing from other companies, it does seem like Tesla might be a step behind okay. in terms of autonomous functionality, mm. at least in certain areas. Right. Well, Optimus might be great at walking. Uh -huh. Other companies are further along in things like object manipulation. Right. Navigating those complex environments. So different companies, different strengths. Yeah. But what does this actually mean for like someone like me? Who isn't building robots for a living? Right. Why should I care if a robot can pour a perfect martini or not? That's the big question, isn't it? Yeah. Like, what's the real world impact of all this? Right. And honestly, it's potentially huge. Okay. Imagine a world where robots could help with everyday tasks. Okay. Chores, errands, elder care even like specialized jobs in dangerous environments. Okay, now that future sounds pretty appealing. Right. No more doing laundry. Lassie. <laughs> but seriously, those are some big what ifs. They are. And while we're still in the early stages of this whole thing, the pace of progress is accelerating so rapidly. Yeah. What seemed like science fiction just a few years ago is quickly becoming reality. So buckle up. Yeah. The robots are coming. In a way, yes. But I think the more important point is they're already here. Okay. And as they become more integrated into our lives, it brings up some important questions. Like what? Like though? how do we make sure that these robots are safe and reliable? Safe and reliable. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Especially when we're talking about robots like interacting with humans. Right. In our homes and workplaces. Yeah, it goes beyond just the technical stuff too. Okay. Like how do we teach robots to understand yeah. human emotions? Right. How or, do we prevent them from like yeah. making biased decisions? Right. These are really complex mm -hmm. issues yeah. that require engineers and ethicists and even policymakers to work together. So it's not just about building a better robot. Right. It's about designing a better future with robots. Exactly. And that brings us back to Tesla's We Robot event and those teleoperated demos, yeah. it felt like they were kind of blurring the lines a little bit, mm -hmm. showing off things that weren't quite there yet. It's an interesting point. Yeah. And it speaks to this bigger question in robotics. Okay. The balance between showing progress and managing expectations. Right. On the one hand, companies want to get people excited. Sure. Attract investors. Yeah. But you also don't want to create unrealistic expectations yeah. or even like mistrust if people feel like they're being misled. Yeah, because robots have a way of capturing our imaginations, right? Totally. We've grown up with all these movies and books yeah. about robots being super intelligent and capable of anything. Absolutely. And that fascination can be a good and a bad thing. Okay. It drives innovation, but it can also create a disconnect right. between what robots can actually do yeah. and what people think they can do. So how do we bridge that gap? Should we all go get like well, robotics well. degrees? Well, I think a basic understanding is definitely helpful okay but more importantly we need to be careful about the information we consume okay when you see a cool robot demo okay don't just assume it's all real right ask questions like who built it yeah what's it supposed to do uh-huh and how much of what you're seeing is actually the robot thinking for itself so it's like looking past the Instagram filter but for robots exactly yeah the more we understand the technology the better we'll be at making sure it's used in a way that benefits everyone. So it's not about being scared of some robot uprising. Right. It's about having an honest conversation. Yes. About the future that we want. Exactly. Exactly. And that conversation needs to happen now. Okay. While things are still developing. Yeah. What we do today will affect how robots fit into our lives for a long time. Okay, so to wrap things up, folks, today we took a dub dive into the world of Tesla's Optimus mm -hmm. and the future of robots. Yeah. Building a robot that can walk is cool. Definitely. But designing a future where robots and humans can work together, mm. that's the real challenge. It's a challenge worth taking on, though. Absolutely. So next time you see a robot doing something amazing, remember, there's always more to the story. Right. Ask questions, stay curious, and let's work towards a future where robots make our lives better. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> and that's it for today's deep dive.